female and male athletes respond to training in a fairly comparable way. As volume and intensity of training increases, so does aerobic capacity and hence performance. Body composition tends to change, whether male or female, indicating that physiologically, we are all actually quite similar. Nutritionally speaking, fueling of training is similar to. Regardless of the sport in question, energy intake must match energy output in order to fuel training and recovery. For endurance athletes, carbohydrate intake needs to equate to approximately 7 to 10 grams per kilogram BWT, or 4 grams per pound BWT. If it doesn't performance tends to suffer, and fatigue creeps in. It is important for any athlete, regardless of gender, to train and compete with optimum fuel reserves, and, of course be well hydrated. Despite seemingly parallel training responses and fuel requirements between males and females, women engaged in regular exercise, and especially those with demanding training and competition schedules have quite unique nutritional needs. These special needs often mirror a particular time in a female's sexual development, or during one of the many hormonal changes, which govern a woman's life. Dramatic hormonal shifts initiate quite unique metabolic and chemical changes within the body that demand specific nutrients. Needs change as a female enters her pubertal years, onset of menarche, during her reproductive years and during pregnancy, and then at the stage that marks the end of reproduction, menopause. Disruption in a female's normal menstrual functioning e.g. amenorrhea may create increased requirements in macro and micronutrients e.g. calcium, magnesium, vitamin K, protein and essential fatty acids. The BNF's briefing paper, Nutrition and Sport, reports increased calcium requirements in amenorrheic women, and advises all female athletes to pay attention to energy, calcium and iron intakes. One. Vitamin K supplementation has been shown to improve markers of bone metabolism in a small group of amenorrheic female elite athletes, too. Vitamin K functions in the synthesis of calcium-binding proteins. Iron and calcium requirements of the female athlete The two main nutrients that require most attention are the minerals iron and calcium. Levels of iron in the body are particularly important given iron's role in many enzyme functions and its fundamental role in the formation of hemoglobin 75% of total body iron is in this form, and as a constituent of myoglobin, the O2-carrying material that functions inside the cells. Iron performs the overwhelming activity of transporting oxygen from the lungs to the mitochondria within muscle cells, vital for the athlete. Females have a higher rate of iron loss than men mainly via blood loss through menstruation, as well as during pregnancy and childbirth. This creates a higher iron requirement in women generally. An athlete's iron status, measured by levels of blood hemoglobin, hemocrit concentration and plasma ferritin levels, may further be compromised due to a number of factors directly related to training. These have been identified as bleeding within the digestive system, inadequate diet and poor iron absorption, loss of iron through heavy sweating, red blood cell breakdown due to trauma created by certain high-impact activities e.g. long-distance running, and even over-frequent blood donation. Iron deficiency anemia, hemoglobin levels below 12 grams per deciliter, has a major impact on performance and immune status. It decreases aerobic capacity and endurance, induces fatigue, and lowers resistance to infection. It has not yet been clearly established whether iron depletion, low ferritin concentrations and reduced bone marrow iron, negatively affects performance, but certainly low ferritin is not something to be ignored. Many however, suggest changes in plasma ferritin concentration are due to either heavy training, or as a response to inflammation, and low blood hemoglobin in some athletes is simply due to plasma volume expansion. Assessment of iron status in athletes is clearly not straightforward. Taking into account measured indices of iron status, individual dietary habits, digestive function, menstruating patterns and other significant factors should help determine the impact iron status may be having on a particular individual's performance. It is fair to say that in some cases, borderline measurements or those at the lower end of normal are often clinically significant, and iron supplementation produces noticeable improvements in iron status and performance. Three. The use of iron supplements at this point may also prevent the development of full-blown iron deficiency anemia in some female athletes, which is often when repletion is most difficult, especially via diet alone. 
Inorganic forms of iron e.g. ferrous sulfate, ferrous gluconate are notoriously poorly absorbed and often cause gastrointestinal problems such as constipation. More importantly, they often fail to raise Hb levels. Where iron supplementation is deemed appropriate i.e. anemia, serious consideration should be given to using new, food form, iron supplements. Food form iron is a version of iron that has been grown into yeast cells, and the absorbability of yeast-based iron is much closer to hem iron. It also produces little or no uncomfortable side effects. Calcium National Surveys have consistently reported low calcium intake as young and adult females 4, 5, 6, as well as female athletes 2, 7. This is normally due to low energy intakes, fad diets, or poorly planned vegetarian and vegan diets. Inadequate calcium intake and consequently poor calcium status is compounded by diets that contain high phosphorus, high salt and high caffeine food and drink. These have a negative impact of calcium balance, due to an increase in urinary calcium excretion 8. Calcium and bone health About 60% of adult bone is laid down during adolescence 9, when calcium deposition is at its highest 10. This is due to increases in the hormones estrogen, growth hormone and calcitriol. Mechanisms are put to work that lead to an overall stimulation of bone cell production and maturation. Bone resorption is outweighed by bone deposition, leading to an increase in overall bone mineralization. There seems to be a critical four-year period during teenage years, from the ages of about 11 to 15 years, during which time most of the total gain in bone mineral density BMD, and content BMC, is accumulated 9. Peak bone mass is a major determinant of osteoporosis in later life, so building the largest bone mass possible is one of the most important strategies to protect against osteoporosis in later life 11. Females in the UK, aged 19 to 50 years, are thought to need at least 700 mg calcium daily in order to meet the demands for calcium deposition in bone. Recommendations are lower than in most other industrialized countries and it has been suggested that 11 to 18 year olds require 1200 to 1500 mg per day to optimize peak bone mass 12. Numerous well-controlled longitudinal studies have produced consistent positive effects of calcium supplementation on BMD in adolescent females 13, 14, 15, which suggests that our UK reference values are suboptimal. Female athletes are a different subclass altogether with regard to calcium needs. Up to 400 mg of calcium has been shown to be lost in males via sweat alone from a 2-hour training session 17 and although CA losses in females are unlikely to be that high any female athlete such as marathoners or triathletes training twice a day could be at risk of not getting enough calcium in the diet to achieve a positive CA balance. Dr. Michael Colgan, renowned New Zealand research scientist believes athletes, both male and female, and especially females with amenorrhea, need to supplement between 1,000 to 2,000 mg CA daily. Supplementation needs should always be assessed in relation to what is actually being obtained from the diet. Dietary intake should therefore always be assessed, along with identifying factors that could potentially increase calcium excretion, e.g. high sodium and phosphorus diets, high protein diets, and an overall high acidic load. Knowledge should also be sought as to the types of calcium available and their rates of absorption. The female athlete triad a major focus in recent years within nutrition and sport for women has been with respect to the female athlete triad. Components of the triad are disordered eating, amenorrhea, absence of periods, and osteopenia as opposed to osteoporosis. A review paper on BMD data in athletes found osteopenia as defined as BMD scores between 1 and 2.5 SD below the mean of young adults to be significantly prevalent in those at risk of the female athlete triad. Interestingly, osteoporosis BMD above 2.5 SD below the mean was relatively uncommon, even in this selected athletic population 16. This by no means relegates the problem as any less significant. A diagnosed case of osteopenia in a young female athlete may actually be a worse scenario in terms of long-term bone health, when compared to a diagnosed osteoporotic in her 60s. An athlete with osteopenia is at greater risk of developing osteoporosis than as an athlete who has normal bone mass. 
There is indeed much concern amongst sports dietitians and nutritionists, who are commonly faced with various subclinical eating disorders, or disordered eating, a significant risk factor for female athlete triad. Disordered eating disrupts menstrual function, and together with intense training schedules, often leads to amenorrhea, or cessation of periods. A lack of estrogenic stimulation of bone cells leads to decreased calcium uptake, and over time, loss of bone mass. Cases such as these do tend to be sport-specific, being confined to sports that either require a low body mass martial arts, rowing, where a low body weight is thought to improve performance long-distance running, triathlon, and in those sports that requests athletes to be aesthetically pleasing to the eye ballet, figure skating, diving. Of course, any female, athlete or non-athlete, under stress, or with low self-esteem, a tendency toward perfectionism, or family problems is at risk for disordered eating, and a downregulation of sex hormone production, in favor of stress hormone production. Decreasing training intensity and optimizing energy and nutrient intake must be the key strategies to dealing with any component of the female athlete triad. Although calcium intake in the diet cannot make up for a lack of estrogen due to menstrual irregularities, it should be optimized in the diet and by supplementation if necessary, especially if a contributory cause of osteopenia is lack of dietary calcium. Practical suggestions to increase intake of calcium and iron Eat low-fat dairy foods such as skimmed milk and natural yogurt daily Add 100 grams of tofu and sunflower seeds to stir fries and salads Add almonds, dried figs and seeds to breakfast cereals Add blanched spinach to scrambled or poached eggs Use tahini, sesame seed spread, on bread and crackers or add a TSP to natural yogurt Eat plenty of dark green leaves and leafy vegetables such as kale, broccoli, watercress and spinach always steam or lightly cook broccoli, kale, cabbage and spinach Try soft bony fish, tinned salmon, sardines, pilchards, as a topping on baked potatoes or whole grain toast Eat vitamin C rich foods to enhance the absorption of iron i.e. plenty of fresh fruit and colorful vegetables Be aware of substances that interfere with iron absorption e.g. phytates found in bran, and tannin in tea Try not to drink tea and coffee with food references 1. Briefing paper, 2001, Nutrition and Sport British Nutrition Foundation. 2. Crichoon A. M., Wolf J., Napin M. H. J., Bruins F., Vermeer C., 1998, Improved Bone Metabolism in Female Elite Athletes After Vitamin K Supplementation. International Journal of Sports Medicine 19, 479 484. 3. Matter M., Stifle T., Graves J. et al., 1987, The Effect of Iron and Folate Therapy on Maximal Exercise Performance in Female Marathon Runners with Iron and Folate Deficiency. Clinical Science 72, 415-422. 4. Department of Health, 1991, Dietary Reference Values for Food, Energy and Nutrients. Report on Health and Social Subjects 41. London, HMS 05, MAFF, Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Food, 1994, The Diet and Nutritional Survey of British Adults Further Analysis. London, HMS 06, HEA, Health Education Authority, 1995, Diet and Health in School Age Children. London, HEA 7, Van Erp Bart AMJ, Saris WHM, Binghorst Ra, Voss Ya, Elvers JWH, 1989, Nationwide Survey on Nutritional Habits in Elite Athletes Part 2. Mineral and Vitamin Intake. International Journal of Sports Medicine 10, 11-16. 8. Matkovic v. Illich J. Z. and an M. B. et al., 1995, Urinary Calcium, Sodium and Bone Mass of Young Females. American Journal of Clinical Nutrition 62, 417-425. 9. Bonjour J. Thainz G., Bertrand B., Slossman D., Rizzoli R., 1991. Critical Years and Stages of Puberty for Spinal and Femoral Bone Mass Accumulation During Adolescence. Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism 73, 555-563. 10. Weaver C. M., Martin Bridge, Plawecki K. L., Peacock M., Wood Obe, Smith D. L., Wastney M. E., 1995, Differences in Calcium Metabolism Between Adolescent and Adult Females. 
American Journal of Clinical Nutrition 61, 577, 581, 11, Christensen C., 1991, Consensus Development Conference on Osteoporosis. American Journal of Medicine 5B, 1S68S. 12, National Institutes of Health Consensus Development Panel on Optimal Calcium Intake, 1994, Optimal Calcium Intake. JAMA 272, 1942-1948. 13, Johnston C. C., Miller J. Z., Slamenda C. W., Reister T. K., Way S., Christian J. C., Peacock M., 1992, Calcium Supplementation and Increases in Bone Mineral Density in Children. New England Journal of Medicine 327, 82-87. 14, Matkovic v, Fontana d, Tomanac c, Goal p, Chestnut ch. Factors which influence peak bone mass formation, a study of calcium balance and the inheritance of bone mass in adolescent females, 1990, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition 52, 878-888. 15, Li W. T. K., Li Young S. S. F., Wang S., Xu Y., Zeng W., Lao J., Oppenheimer S. J. et al., 1994, Double Blind, Controlled Supplementation and Bone Mineral Accretion in Children Accustomed to a Low Calcium Diet. American Journal of Clinical Nutrition 60, 744-750. 16, Khan K. M., Louis Ambrose T., Shranam, et al., 2002, New Criteria for Female Athlete Triad Syndrome? British Journal of Sports Medicine 36, 10-13. 17, Kiestjes, R. C., et al., 1996, Changes in Bone Mineral Content in Male Athletes. J. Amer Med Asik 276-226-230, Lucy Ann Prado has an MSc degree in Human Nutrition and Metabolism, and a BSc Hans degree in Sports Science. She is a registered nutritionist with the Nutrition Society. Aside from her own private practice and consultancy work, she is the resident nutritionist at the Sussex Center for Sport and Exercise Medicine with Dr. Nick Webern. Article source, https colon slash slash articles.com slash expert slash lucy dash and underscore prado slash 10913. Article source, http colon slash slash articles.com slash 65573.